Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. Today's video is the complete guide to the coinage of James II. We're going through every single coin minted under James II, who reigned for a very short time, only 1685 to 1688, for three years. We will go in denomination order, starting with the lowest denomination, building up to the higher denominations. So we start off with the farthing, and here we see on screen a James II farthing reverse. The main design feature here is of course the portrait of Lady Britannia, seated with the shield to her side with a Union flag on, and holding a sort of what looks more like a staff but is in fact a spear, to her side. The obverse features the portrait of James II. This is a right-facing bust of the king, cutting off at his shoulders and he's wearing a laureate in his hair. Rather than having the Roman numeral giving the number of like, the second or the third or the fourth of that named king, it has the full word in Latin there, Secundibus James Secundibus. It's James II. That was a copper farthing and now we move on to the tin farthing. There were two types. The tin farthing here introduced because there was a shortage of copper. The same design is used. Britannia here is holding the leaves to the sky, has the spear to her side with the shield as well and the word Britannia around her. And then on the obverse, we can see here the portrait, the same portrait of James II, facing to the right, uncrowned with a laureate. And again, the full Latin legend with the word for second rather than the number second. You can see this coin has been plugged in the middle with a copper plug there. So it's not the you know full coin of tin. Now then, moving up a denomination, we move on to the half penny piece, the James II half penny. And here it is, looking very, very similar to the farthing, as in fact, it was the exact same coin made of tin as well, the only difference being that it was twice the weight and therefore twice the value, as there are two farthings in the half penny and then two half pennies in the penny, therefore four farthings to the penny. Here is the obverse of the half penny, once again a very similar design to the farthing. Here on the obverse we see there is a different design though for the portrait, we can see a different style of clothing worn around his neck and a more rounded head portrait there, where he's looking a bit more stern in his sort of facial expression with the legend around. Now these half pennies weighed 11.3 grams and 29 millimeters, but they were demonetized in 1971, legal tender for close to 300 years. Very impressive. Now then, moving on to the penny coin, and we return to silver coins now from the copper and tin. This is a silver penny from the reign of James II, and this one has been very much toned, so the silver color isn't as visible. But we see here the Roman numeral one underneath the crown with a date either side and the legend around. Moving to the obverse, we now see a big change. Can you see it? That's right, James II, the portrait is now facing to the left. He has swapped sides or swapped the way he's looking on the coin. That wouldn't happen today due to the left right facing monarch to monarch tradition. We can see though he is still wearing a laureate crown in his hair, but this time the portrait cuts off more at his neck, not showing his shoulders. Now then, moving on to the two pence piece, the two pence coin from James II's reign is here and has the pretty much the same design with an added Roman numeral, of course, due to the added value. And as you would expect, the coin is twice the weight and sort of therefore twice the value of silver. This coin has the same portrait on the obverse again. Notice the full word for second, secondo, has been replaced by the standard Roman numerals there. We see the two I's, the two ones for James II, and the De Gratia inscription, grace of, by the grace of God, has been added. Now then, moving on to the threepence or threepence of James II, we see here a now familiar design following the trend. One, two, three Roman numerals there under the crown with a date at the top, and then the portrait of James II on the obverse, the same obverse design here as we can see. This one has got some more darker toning and it looks quite cool bringing out his portrait. Now then, moving on to the fourpence or the groat, I'm sure you can guess the design. That's right, there are four of these Roman pillars or ones as they are known for the denomination of fourpence with a legend around, date at the top and a crown there as well. And that same portrait on the obverse of James II there, and you can see the milling around the coin as well as this is a milled coin by this era. Now then, moving on to the Maundy coins for a quick detour from the circulation coins, we do note that there are the same designs on the Maundy coins as the circulating coins of that denomination. So some of these designs were used for just Maundy coins and were given out by the monarch. The same designs were then mass produced for circulation coins as well. Now then, moving on to the sixpence piece, the James II sixpence. Here we see it on screen now, a lovely, lovely design. We have the date at the top, either side of a crown. There are then four crowns on four shields. We have the three lions of England to the top, to the left, the harp of Ireland, to the right, the lion rampant of Scotland, and to the bottom, the lilies of France. We then have the legend around this between the crowns. Moving to the obverse now, we see a new portrait of King James II, and a lovely one it is. The same sort of facial design there, but with much more added hair and detail. Longer hair portrait, draped clothing at the bottom, and the laureate still in his hair. He's facing to the left this time, with the legend around again, with the de Gratia of it and the two for second. Moving up a denomination again, we come onto the shilling, which has the same design here we can see. The four crown shields about the central garter star in the middle. And the obverse has the same portrait as well of James II, so it's basically the same coin. So as with some other denominations, it'll be the way to tell it apart will just be by the size of the coin. And you know, you know that size and that weight of coin will be a one shilling coin. The coin has milling as well on both sides to prevent it from being clipped and has a nice design. Now then, there's no florins as that was introduced in Victoria's reign, so moving on to the half crown coin. We see it here once again with the same design on both obverse and reverse. 
the four crowned shields about the central garter star, and the left-facing uncrowned portrait of James II on the obverse of the coin. Now then, moving up to the biggest and highest denomination silver coin, the crown. A lovely, lovely coin. It does have the same design, which I think is a bit lazy for some of these coins. Four denominations have the same design, although it is a very nice design, and I'm sure it would look very, very cool on the lovely large canvas of almost a 40 millimeter piece of silver on the crown. A lovely coin on both sides, with the portrait of James II there looking very regal, very cool, and very of its time and style, which is a cool piece of history to have with milling on the round the edge by this time on the bigger coins. Now then, moving on to the gold coins, we have the half guinea, and here it is, a lovely, lovely gold coin. We have a similar design though, with four crowned shields, with the same things in each shields. There is the addition of four scepters as well in the middle. We have two of them with the royal orb. We then have the harp of Ireland and thistle of Scotland on the other ones, and the garter star has been removed. And there's a slightly different portrait on the obverse with the same legend around, but just some sort of, I think it's just a bit less hair on the portrait on the obverse there. Moving on to the guinea coin we see here, the same design. But what a lovely design it is, especially on the color of this lovely old guinea gold coin. There's no garter star with the scepters there, the only difference from the other designs on the silver ones, with those lovely shields there as well, and the legend around. I think once again, there's a slight difference to the obverse portrait here. This one looks very, very nice indeed. This is a very nice quality picture. Bring out the cool portrait here. This one has no none of the shoulders there, just cutting off at the neck. Now then, moving on to a very big and prestigious denomination, the double guinea. Here it is, again the same design. Now double guineas from James II's reign are very, very rare. Even pictures of them are hard to find online, as this one was here. But it does have the same design on both obverse and reverse as the guinea coin, just being twice the size and weight, and therefore twice the value when it was used in circulation back in Jacobean England in the 1680s. The quintuple guinea then is the biggest coin under James II, and is a huge piece of gold. Almost 40 grams of gorgeous gold that was once used in circulation. A coin that I think would have been too beautiful to spend for me, as both sides of them, as you can see, the same design though, but on that lovely large canvas, would have been such a lovely piece to hold back in the day. And it is so big it has room for edge milling on there, with a big Latin legend all around the rim of the coin. So there we go. Please do comment down below your favourite James II coin, and whether you'd like us to do a video on the gun money minted under the reign of James II. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do subscribe as well if you have enjoyed, and we'll see you soon for more coins and bits and bobs in the future. Bye.